All right, I got a quick video for you. Um, this morning, for me, it's this morning. Uh, these dessert plates that I threw the other day, I'm gonna show you uh, how I trim them and what I'm thinking when I'm doing it. So we'll just crank this out quick. Um, these symmetrical forms, I tend to trim a bit faster than the wobbly uh, asymmetrical wonky forms. So um, for this, what I am looking at uh, roughly, and you'll get better at this the more you do them, but I'm looking for the transition from this flatter surface to, to where it starts to ramp up a little bit on the inside. And what I would do is just kind of hold that general spot and then flip and, you know, as though your fingers are meeting and then just throw a little scuff, a little line in there to give you an idea of, uh, of the boundary. So um, that is kind of where I want to match uh, the boundary of the foot on the bottom. I want to put it somewhere, again, this is just my personal preference. Um, I think it feels and looks nice. Uh, I also think that they stack nicely when you trim them like this. And uh, oh, in a drying rack, they tend to sit in a drying rack really nicely. Um, if you trim them like this. So these weird functional things that you kind of learn as you make more functional pieces and uh, people use them or I recommend using your own pots uh, from time to time just so you know how they work and how they feel and um, you know in different circumstances as you're using the piece uh, what happens. So little pinchers I'm just kind of grabbing the general spot where the transition happens and marking just a rough line I think that rough line can just serve as kind of a point of reference. Yeah, I don't necessarily stick to it. I, I really do start trimming and just eyeballing proportions and what I think looks right. Um, but that line is, uh, um, is a good starting point, I think. And again, if you want to make it a little bit more pronounced, you could always like actually scrape and I don't know if that's just going to show up nicely but scrape a little rough boundary so you have an idea of where you want your foot to go so um, with trimming these uh, plates I'm really only using this big uh, this bigger trimming tool and then this smaller triangular situation so uh, I get this thing going pretty fast and just take a fair amount of material off up until that line. With a lot of my plates too, I found that just the, the width of this tool as I line it up, sort of the space that it fits on the piece right before it hits the little pads there seems to be about right as far as the transition. So a lot of times I don't really even mark the bottom, I just kind of eyeball it like that and get a general idea. So I want to get some of that material out so I'm getting that angle. And then what I do is I bring this triangular tool and I'm gonna come at it uh, perpendicular to the wheel. And I'm just gonna come at it from the side and bring it in until I define the foot. Actually, I lied. I didn't quite go straight perpendicular. I kind of line it up and then just curve it over to get a general sort of boundary for the foot. Like that. And I'm gonna come back through with this larger tool and because uh, the angle, this angle only allows me enough space before it starts hitting those pads, I'm gonna actually gonna angle it forward so the cutting surface actually fits there. And it might bounce off the pads a little bit. It gives it a little sort of unevenness and sometimes I'll slow it down a little bit. I'll slow the wheel down a little bit if I feel the tool catching and, and jumping or chattering. Um, chattering looks cool. Uh, chattering is great if you're trying to chatter. Uh, I am not trying to chatter these plates necessarily, but I don't mind a little wonkiness and weirdness. I also like leaving tool marks on these uh, pieces as well. Um, I'm going to come back to this tool and I'm just going to sort of define that the foot edge and the angle just a touch. I'm not going to get crazy with it. I'll show you this up close after I'm done. And then, oh, when it comes to the inside, um, 
I like making my feet sort of taper in. So if you're thinking like the foot's tapering in a little bit, and I'll show you what I mean in a second. So I'm gonna start a little bit more narrow and then just eyeball it and work my way to the thickness of the foot that I think looks right. And then what I'm going for now, so I've got the thickness that I think looks right. What I'm going for now is I'm gonna push this uh, tool down and I'm trying to get to about the same height as the outside here. Um, I like the look of a pot that uh, is just sitting there and then it looks like the foot ring is sort of an attachment on it. So I'm trying to create one surface with just a foot ring on it, if that sort of makes sense. So, so I'm pushing that tool down until I, until I think I'm right about the same level as this level. Um, and then I'm gonna come back to my larger tool, take more material away, lightning round it, just flying through this. Just like that. Sometimes you can also take your fingers and just hold, uh, hold the foot and it'll give you kind of a general idea as to whether or not you're at the same heights from the inside compared to the outside. Um, just like that, that's about right. Um, and then, Next thing, uh, I want, again, I want that tapered foot, so I'm just gonna take this little tool and cut a little angle into it, use my fingers to soften it. And then you can kind of see the profile that I'm going for there, just like that. So um, I'm gonna fly through one more. I'm just gonna show you kind of the pace of them. I do these, uh, I do these plates pretty fast. Um, for the most part all the way through. Um, sometimes I'll slow it down and I'll actually point out why I'm slowing it down when I do that. Uh, but mainly, get this thing going again, setting up that angle, taking a ton of material away, trying to, to take material away until this part of the tool lines up with the angle down here. So I want that nice gradual slope. If you hear that wonderful squeak, that means your tool is chattering. That's when I'll sometimes slow the wheel down. So again, coming at it with this smaller triangular tool, just a little bit. And then now trying to sort of, that angle was there, now I'm trying to bring it down just a touch and even it out. Uh, again, I wanna point out too, I'm always using two hands. So there's kind of a control hand and then whatever, you know, the brute force, whatever, of the tool here. So, getting it until I feel like it looks right. And again, with, with the previous videos, I'm sort of trying to take the whole piece in at the same time. Um, another thing, I, was like, I came across something, I don't, I don't know what I was watching last night, but I came across something where they were talking about how, um, if you are not attached to the uh, end result of a task that you're doing, like, you know, this plate has to turn out perfect or whatever it is, right? Um, and you're actually just kind of in the process of doing it and enjoying that. I know it sounds kind of woo-woo-y or whatever, but uh, you, you tend to perform better while you're kind of going toward that, uh, going toward that outcome. I don't know if that made any sense, but what I'm saying is like, I'm not, I know I'm gonna fail on a few of these. I know I'm gonna break a couple of these plates. I don't know which one it is, but it's, uh, well, actually, I do know which one it is. Um, it just happens, I trim too shallow and basically push right through. I know at least a few of these aren't gonna survive, so I'm not attached to this specific plate or any of these really. Um, so I'm just paying attention to the process of it and trying to get out of my own way and, and sort of quit while I'm ahead. So uh, this one feels like it looks decent. I don't mind it. It's gonna shrink, it's gonna thin out. Uh, I trimmed away a fair amount of, uh, of weight. These started out as two and a half pounds of clay. I'd say right now this is maybe at like a pound and a half and that's still got a fair amount of moisture in it. So um, I, again, I'm thinking function. I want it to be durable, but I, want, I don't want it to be, uh, you know, super crazy paperweight. So little maker's mark on the foot and there you go.
Um, again, a quick one today. Just wanted to show you how I do uh, these little dessert plates. Um, they're actually pretty slick, little sandwich plate, little luncheon plate, whatever. Um, yeah, I hope you appreciate these videos, or I, I hope you enjoy these videos. I appreciate you watching. <laughs> um, and again, if you are looking to support the channel, there is a, uh, there are some links down below uh, in the description. Uh, like, subscribe, notifications. Um, yeah, I'll be making another video soon. I appreciate you watching per usual. Peace.